What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video, we finally have it, the update to the cinema line, the purported next generation C70, the C70 Mark II, that's actually the C80. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, I'm Joe. This is my channel, Joseph Blake Photography, where we talk about tech and news and gear and reviews and how-tos, and we go on adventure, adventuroos. Anyway, on this channel, we talk about all the things that creators use to create, whether it's here on YouTube or other places in social media, whether you're delivering to clients or you're just delivering it for your friends and family or just for yourself, whatever it is that you're doing that makes you happy and gets you the job done. We talk about that here on this channel. If you're interested in that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if at the end of this video, you think that I've done a good job, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It tells the algorithm that I am doing what is good and, and right in the world. Also, socials down below. If you wanna go ahead and follow me there, as well as my website, where I have a blog that I am posting every like month or so. So you can follow me over there with your RSS reader of choice. All right, enough about that. Now let's jump in to talk about this brand new cinema camera. Okay, so hot off the heels of the Canon R1 and R5 Mark II announcement, and honestly, not far since the C400 announcement, which when I reported on it, we thought was gonna be the C70 Mark II. We definitely got that wrong except we got it right. It was a full frame 6K cinema camera, but it wasn't the next step of the C70 line, which had been in dire need of an upgrade for quite some time and had quite a few items that cinematographers and creators had been hoping they would see some updates to, uh, some particular features that they were looking for. And we have most of them now on this new camera, the C80. So let's talk about the specs. This is a 6K, full frame, backside illuminated stacked sensor from Canon. It will shoot in 6K 30 as well as 4K 120, and it will shoot in a cropped Super 35 mode. So you have both the full frame and the Super 35 mode depending on the lenses that you're using. You can also switch out the mount and you could put PL lenses on this camera. We have 12G SDI, which, which means that you're gonna get all of the advantages of SDI over HDMI. HDMI, while a great connector and much better than older analog connections, it can be a little fiddly and honestly it just doesn't hold up in some cases to the strain and stress that you're going to put some of these devices through when you're using them day in and day out. SDI gives you a fiber optic locking connector. It gives you longer cable length opportunity. You can transmit fully uncompressed audio and video along SDI. There's no issues with HDCP and you can embed timecode into SDI. But it still has HDMI and it can simultaneously output via connectors, which is huge. So if you have an HDI screen or recorder uh, external to the camera, but you also wanna be able to put SDI back to where you're going to actually be recording all of your footage or you want a second recording of your footage, you know, the extensibility here is huge. More on the sensor, it does have triple base ISO like the C400. So you're gonna have base ISO at 800, 3200, and 12,800. Now Canon claims that the sensor will be able to generate 16 stops of dynamic range with this sensor. Another thing that cinematographers were asking for out of the C70 Mark II, the C80 now, were more codecs and more control over those codecs and more control over uh, and options over how they would record their video. And this thing is packed full. So you have Cinema Raw Light, you have an AVC codex. You can record in 6K30 Raw, or you can record in one of the HEVC formats, or you can record in 4K 10-bit 422 with an oversampled 6K image, which is gonna be super sharp and clean. Or you can go up to the 4K 120p which in that mode, you still get access to dual pixel autofocus too, which means that you're getting dual pixel autofocus with the ability to track people, to track animals, eye autofocus, all of the things that we've come to know and love in cameras like the R6 Mark II, the R3, this is high-end autofocus from Canon. So if you aren't using a focus puller, you'll be able to do quite a bit with the autofocus coming out of this camera. Another thing that people had asked for and they're getting, it's like Christmas for cinema folks, is built-in NDs. So you have built-in ND filters on the camera, which means that if you're shooting with wide open aperture lenses or just absolutely beautiful cinema lenses and the look you want is just wide open, 
and you need to be shooting with the 180 degree rule, you're gonna be shooting at one over 50, you're gonna be shooting at F1.8 or F2, and you're gonna be shooting in log, C log two with this base ISO of ISO 800, uh, which means you're gonna be pulling in a lot of light and an ND filter is gonna help you balance that out. Camera will also be coming with two SD card slots as well as support for LUTs in camera. So you'll be able to shoot with LUTs as well as long op shooting for more control over the compression in your shooting, which again is something that people were really asking for. One thing that I pointed out originally in my C70 Mark II video as a thing that cinematographers were really looking for was an improvement in the hinge and the screen on the C70. As these cameras get used in lots and lots of applications, day in and day out, they have a tendency to start to wear out and break down. And so the area that tends to break down and wear out the fastest on the C70 is the screen and specifically the hinge. And what we're hearing now with the C80 is that the hinge has been completely redesigned, completely improved, and should be a lot more robust for the kind of workflow and kind of workhorse status that this camera is going to get in a lot of the cinema shops that it will live in. And again, another thing that was mentioned in my video uh, a while back was about the joystick. The joystick that was included in the C70 was a little fiddly, people didn't love it, and also it didn't allow you to control a lot of things. A lot like what you have on a lot of the newer cameras from Canon, like the R5 Mark II or the R1 where it really gives you the opportunity to control a lot of different things right there with your thumb. And it's a little more robust. So really what I think Canon here has done is just given us everything that we want out of this camera. So if you're in a production house or if you're a solo creator who is creating corporate content or things like that, or maybe super high end wedding production, I don't know, would you use like a C70 or a C80 at a wedding? Is that something folks are doing? Let me know down in the comments if you're a wedding videographer and you're ringing around with a C70 or if you would potentially be looking at the C80. I'd really like to hear from you. But one really interesting thing is that while this is effectively the same sensor out of the C400 in a much smaller package, which allows it to really easily be slapped onto a gimbal or a tripod or even handheld. While it does do 6K, it'll only do 6K up to 30. If you wanna get up to 60 frames a second, you do have to crop it down, but you're still cropping it down to 4.3K and using the Super 35 crop on the sensor. It does have Canon's updated hot shoe, like on the R6 Mark II, the R3, the R5 Mark II, the R1. So it does have that updated hot shoe, so you have the ability to add all those additional accessories. It does have XLR. It does have three and a half millimeter microphone jack. And again, you now have all of the control over codecs and frame rates that you didn't have before. And I think that with Canon, including a lot of the cinema features from the R5C into the R5 Mark II, this makes perfect sense. Canon knows that there are folks out there that need a dedicated cinema camera. The R5 Mark II can be that, but that's not really all it can do. It can do a lot of other things, but it's in some cases it's kind of hamstrung uh, by the fact that it's, it's in a mirrorless body, right? It's in that smaller form factor and Canon needed to update this smaller, version of their cinema line to be able to get those features out there in a package that isn't as small as the R5 or R1, right? A lot of people have complained that the R1 and the R3 aren't the video behemoths that they were expecting. This is your camera. So if you were looking for an awesome, small packaged, full frame cinema beast that shoots in raw, this is your camera with all of the features that cinematographers have been asking for quite some time. So if you're shooting documentaries, if you're shooting corporate content, if you're shooting weddings, if you're shooting any kind of content where you need all of this extensibility and all these features to be able to really take it to the pro level, that is what this camera is for, but it's coming in at 5,500 bucks. That honestly feels like a phenomenal price for this camera, considering the fact that it has the sensor from the C400 and it has all of this extensibility, it has all of this IO with a ton of features that just feel like a really, just a great next step over the C70. That this is its spiritual successor. I think this is great. I agree that this should not have been the C70 Mark II. This is way more than the C70 Mark II. Uh, this is the C80. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be able to get items into the hands of 
content creators, cinematographers and videographers and folks who are creating this content, hopefully they'll be able to buy this thing and that it doesn't, uh, you don't have to wait six months to get it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If this is the kind of info that you're into, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And if you thought that this video was any good, go ahead and hit the like button. Socials all down below, go ahead and find me there. That's a quick and easy way for you to support the channel. Another way that you can support the channel is by clicking on any of the affiliate links that I have down below, like my music that I use for all of my videos or any of the items that we use here to create the videos. And if you use any of those links, I do get a small commission or anything you purchase, make it easier for me to make videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.